Hello, welcome back to the garage. Today, we're playing with one of these. Oh dear. Oh, fire. You don't need a special tool, you need a special tin. Okay, so um, what I've got here is the back of a, uh, a diff casing, as you can see, and um, this little bush that sits in the back here tends to disintegrate and um, fall apart with age, which gives you a really sloppy gear change. It really doesn't help the gear change in any way because that's the rod that connects back to the rod linkage. Um, it actually, it's, this, this is the back of the gearbox here, and it actually sits in here. So the top rod, which is this one, goes through there so if that is um well it's not in here because i've pulled it out already but um if that one is worn it tends to um yeah give you a sloppy gear change makes the stick wobble around left to right a bit more doesn't feel very positive um it's a fairly easy one to replace out of the car i haven't tried this in the car yet i'll have a look at it and when the time comes but i believe it can be done um here's the one i removed from um that gearbox and as you can see this middle piece well, literally, it just pulls out. It's that it's that worn. The rubber's disintegrated. It's all separating off. So um, putting a new one in is fairly straightforward. You can just knock it in. Not a trouble. Getting the old one out, that can be a problem. So I'm going to show you a, um, a real basic tools method for um, getting this one back out. Okay, so you can see the housings here. Um, you need to pull it out this if you try and knock it through this way there's not or well, there is enough room you can get it out this way but you tend to find it'll get jammed in there against the casing you've got a lever against the aluminium casing and there's a real big risk that you'll punch a hole in the side of this casing if you try and push on it too hard because it's only a, a light cast aluminium piece so what i like to use um in the, my general tool is a um, m8 rivnut it fits just perfectly on the inside of um, of this housing here, as you can see, it distorts itself nicely and it turns into a nice puller. I've used this, I don't know how many times. This is an old piece of kit that's been in my drawer for years. But upon doing some measuring, I have found that a standard um, M8 washer is uh, exactly the right size as well. For avoidance of doubt, it's an M8 washer, which means in the middle, 8.3, 8.5, because they do allow a little bit of clearance. And externally, easy, don't lose it. 15.7, so just under 16 mil external diameter. Um, the actual external diameter of that bush is 16 mil, give or take a smudge. You can see that there? Yeah. So um, it's, a, it's a fiddly one. What we're going to do is we can't to do pulling you want the nut the bolt on the bolt head on this side and we can't do that so we've kind of got to assemble it together the other way so i'm going to do a uh, pair of big washers these are just penny washers m8 penny washers this is a 17 mil socket you could put a 16 mil on there but you are very much clutching at the straws of what will reach um why is it not reaching what did I do last time? Ah, oh, okay, I used the thingy last time, didn't I? Wally. Let's see if I can find another way around this. Drat. Okay, so Mr. Clever Clocks has cocked up. Uh, the reason I was using this, this is my sort of like go-to stash um, bolt length, and um, they are of a length that is not quite long enough to make it all the way through the socket and out the other side. So the riv nut means that the threaded part's actually in the middle. That's why I was using the rivnut. nut. But if you have a long enough bit of M8 studding or a long enough M8 bolt, you could use that. Um, there probably are Imperial sizes that do this. I just don't use them because I've got metric stuff lying around from newer cars. Right, first port of call. You get the uh, middle part of this bush out. You don't have to, but it will make your life easier. If you can pull that out, 
he says. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Out it comes. It just gives you a bit more uh, space to play with. You're not dealing with uh, the rubber part as well. So that bit's out. And if you're lucky enough, at this point, this bit will have moved. On this one, it hasn't. Some of them they do. Some of them are quite loose. So here we go with the assembly. I'm going to plonk the uh, rivet nut in here. I'm going to uh, get my washers over a nut. So it's a 17 mil socket I'm using to go over the top. The rivet nut on the back. I'm just going to wind it up. There we are. It's tight. So just start winding. That's it. Once you've got them together, as I said, if you had a nut and bolt on the back side, it would do the same. You'd be able to get maybe a spanner on there. The rivet nut tends to lock in and uh, lo locate okay. So I'm going to start pulling this in. Hopefully, the rivet nut will allow it to start moving. There you go. Then, if you can see in here, I'll zoom in so you can see what's going on. As I'm winding the spanner around, the uh, bush is just pulling through. Achievable under the car, I would imagine, but tricky nonetheless. Whee, easy. You just keep winding it through, and there you go. So, oh, let's get this so you can see it. Simple as that. Nuts and bolts is all you need. You don't need a puller. There's probably special tools that could do the job better, but not in this case. Not for what it's worth. And so the joy of using the M8 rivet nut is the head's actually pretty strong. So once it's distorted, as you can see, it's been stretched out over the years. Um, but it gets to a point and it won't, won't stretch any further. And this large part won't mushroom itself completely flat and disappear through the middle. Well, it hasn't yet anyway. Probably will do eventually. But there you go, yeah, M8 rivet nut. So if you had a long enough M8 bolt, which I don't have, you could do a uh, nut and bolt through from this side, but yeah. I wouldn't recommend a shorter socket because you've got to be able to get that all the way in there. Where are you? There you are. Yeah, so if you can't get this sleeve all the way inside then your socket's not deep enough um, yeah this is a uh, a 19 mil so yeah they're all they're all just about around about deep enough to get the bush out to a point where you can just get hold of it lever it out you can see the uh, the state of these bushes they're just just, just degrade with age yeah you're in the middle there so yeah that's how you pull them out once it's done the new one you can uh, wind it in the other way, put the uh, big washer this side, just be careful of the bolt distance when you wind it in, but you can wind it in with the uh, nut and bolt or a, bit, or a big washer or a bolt on here, and you can pull it in so far, go for a shorter bolt, you can pull it in again, but again, you've got to be careful of the length here, otherwise you will pull it that way. It's probably easier to find a socket that fits over this part and externally sits over here so maybe a, uh, a 15 mil socket or a 14 mil socket 9 16 if you're in uh, English money might fit over there nicely but yeah as for putting a new one in I'll come I'll cover that when I come to it but right now I'm just putting these putting it out of these because these are these are fairly dead I hope you found that useful just a short one today I have got some more content coming I'm just waiting for uh, time to actually edit it all together I'm beavering away on a uh, suspension rebuild. The hubs are being re going to be rebuilt, and I've got something special planned for the uh, for the gear linkage rod. So, um, if you've seen my Instagram, you'll already know what I'm planning. But there is this, there's there's more involved in what I'm trying to do with the gear linkage. It's like a zero play kind of thing. So, uh, stay tuned, and um, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you. And goodbye.